Hello everyone, I am Matt Fresh and welcome to my brutally honest review of The Plucky Squire. As always, these are my 100% honest thoughts on the game, no sugarcoating anything. Now once again, I haven't actually played this game yet since it's not out, but because this is the internet, I have already made up my mind about whether it's good or not and why. So right off the bat, I'm going to tell you my score, which is an 8.5 out of 10. So when this is released, if anyone reviews it less than 8.5, they're wrong and you should be mad at them. And if anyone reviews it more than an 8.5, they're wrong and you should be mad at them. Now, I know you're wondering, well, why is it only an 8.5? Well, make sure to like and subscribe and let's get into it. The Plucky Squire tells a delightful fable about a young protagonist, Jot, of a children's book who must save his book from being burned by the Christian church. That's what I'm guessing. After being granted the power to move between his realm and the real world, the squire Jot must overcome the evil forces of white Christians who misunderstand Jesus' teachings to stop his world and all of his friends from being destroyed. It's a very light-hearted fable. It's all presented like it's a storybook. He comes from a storybook. The story is told from a storybook perspective. Um, there's rhyming. There's a, a fun narrator. Okay, so while well, yes, the evil, scary Christian church is, is quite a dark force. You know, it's all very lighthearted and fun and and family friendly. And and all all the kids are, are going to have a go. The whole family. Maybe not your racist grandma or your racist uncle, or your racist aunt. Okay, so maybe not the whole family, but like the normal ones. They're gonna love this story. It's cute, it's colorful, it's funny. It has a, a good message to teach kids, which is that uh, burning books is wrong, and um, that Jesus was not a crazy person who hates the gays. He was a pretty cool dude. So it's a very simple story. There's not too much to get into without spoiling it, and I don't want to spoil it for you because there are lots of twists and turns, okay? I'm not going to say who makes a big cameo, but I, I already mentioned him. I think you know. It's Jesus. Okay, I spoiled it. That's fine. He's not the only one. There's lots of other fun cameos from other fictional characters. And, you know, it's just a fun little tale. Um, the narrator, he'll narrate things that'll happen in the world. You'll see the words in the book when you're in the book. They'll be on the page that'll affect the things in the level. It's all very delightful. It, 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 you know what? If this was a real book, it's something that you would, you know, read to your kids or your, your nanny would read to your kids while you're, you know, off screwing your polo teacher. You know, I don't know. Everybody has their own lifestyles. But it's a good story. It's not a very deep story, but it's fun. And that's what matters. It's a fun story that will really piss off alt-right people and crazy Christian ladies. And you know what? That's what you want in a story. You want to have a good time and you want to piss off religious white women. And the devs succeeded. The Plucky Squire is a hybrid 3D platformer, 2D side scroller top down action adventure puzzler it's 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 weird it's wild it's wonderful you got these sections when you're in the storybook it's all 2d animated drawn like a nice happy storybook pencil you can see the pencil lines or the marker lines i don't know if they're pencil or mar marker it, they did it in a computer Probably. If they if they actually drew this, that's impressive. I don't know how you draw a video game, but you know what? Let's just say they drew it because I didn't play this yet, right? If I say it, it must be true. This is the internet. So they drew this. They drew the game with their pencil markers and their crayon erasers. And so when it's 2D, when you're in the storybook, when Jod is in the storybook, fighting off the evil forces of, I don't know what you call it, um, misguided Christianity, who they've invaded the book to kill everybody, so then the people in the river can burn the book. Yeah, that's it. That's definitely it. So when you're in that section, it's top down. Sometimes they're side scrolling. You know, when it's top down, it plays a little bit like Zelda. Side scrolling plays a little bit like Zelda 2, if Zelda 2 was good. Um, you know, there's puzzles. You, you hack and slash enemies. There's words that, you know, like the words on the page, and they're like, 
Like they change and they affect the world and the puzzles and it's all very cool. So like there will be words on the page and it'll be like, this block was in the way and you'll move the block and the words will change. And the narrator who doesn't sound like Morgan Freeman and I think that was a mistake, but, and he'll say the thing and he'll be like, the block is, you know, I'm not good at impressions. It's all, it's, it's fun. Fun whimsical and then the 3D sections when you're out in the real world exploring. Cause sometimes you gotta you gotta hop out of the out of the book to go into the real world to get something, to go back into the book. And sometimes you gotta you gotta go back into the book to do something out of the book. But when you're out of the book, it's like a 3D platformer. Gorgeous art style, everything comes to life. It's very reminiscent of it takes two in the style that it's like a like a toy in this world, everything's shrunken down because you're like this little miniature, just came out of a book. You're on a desk, a child's desk, which, by the way, very barren of homework. What kind of parenting is that? You're going to burn their storybooks, but you're not going to force them to do homework as well? Pick out your priorities, people. Pick out your priorities. Anyway, so that's like a 3D platformer. There's puzzles. you got to find things to do the puzzles. The puzzles are different, you know, and there's lots of different... Lots of different variations on the gameplay depending on what you're doing, depending on, on what the narrator says. The narrator will narrate things that are happening in the book, that are happening out of the book, and that changes the way things go, you know. Sometimes he'll be like, you know, and and the plucky squire had to find a key, and that means you have to go find a key to unlock a door. And sometimes he'll be like, and the plucky squire was filled with rage and bloodlust and... and went on a spree against his enemies and so you'll have to go on a spree against your enemies and just you go around decapitating them and blood spurts everywhere and you're like how is this game still rated e for everyone but it's very cool and you know your, your, your kids got to see that kind of stuff eventually you know get desensitized to it they're gonna end up on twitter they're gonna see decapitations might as well you know show it to them here first to you know they don't go crazy anyway that's the gameplay audio visuals Visuals fantastic. I already said a bit about the visuals. Looks like a storybook in the storybook. Doesn't look like a storybook when it's not supposed to look like a storybook. Visuals are fantastic. Full of, full of whimsical sound effects and the narrator again. Very good narrator. Doesn't sound like Morgan Freeman. He should have sounded like Morgan Freeman. He doesn't sound like Morgan Freeman, but he's still a very good narrator. Um, the main villain, Karen. Very, very, very great performance by whoever voices Karen. Um, I think she's voiced. I don't know. There's a narrator, I'm pretty sure. So the other characters got to have voice actors, right? I'm assuming. Um, so let's assume. And if when the game is out and you, we all play it and there isn't voice acting other than the narrator, let's just assume that after this review, they very quickly patched it out. But for the sake of this review, the, the copy of the game that I'm reviewing, the one I didn't play, but... That's fine. I've seen enough. It's an 8.5. They patched it out. Anyway, she's very good. Very believable, annoying white woman. You, 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 you know, um, if you didn't know that she was a crazy book-burning Christian white woman because of the story of the game, you would know it just by listening to her. You close your eyes, you hear this woman speaking, you're like, yep, she's, she's going to complain to a 18 year old cashier who doesn't get paid enough that the stickers on the t-shirts are mislabeled and she demands a discount as such. Great audio visuals, performance. This game runs at a steady 60 FPS, except on Switch in which it um, runs at a slightly unsteady 46 FPS with sometimes, sometimes, you know, when things get crazy, Lots of explosions going around. Sometimes it dips into like the 22 range, but that's just the Switch version. PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, 60 FPS steady. And um, yeah, perfect performance. No glitches, not a single glitch in this game that I know of. So if, if you play this game and there's any glitches, you're wrong. There's no glitches. Whatever you think was a glitch wasn't a glitch. And if other people say there's glitches, they're also wrong. There are no glitches in this game as per my experience that I am just making up right now. No glitches. So, finally, the hypothetical fun factor. This game, hypothetically, extraordinarily fun. This is one of those games that when you play it, you're gonna have a big smile on your face the whole time. You're, you're gonna be like you were a kid again, right? You're gonna play this game and you're gonna be like, wow, this is like when I was a kid and I played games for the first time, you know? Um, much like Astrobot, although this isn't as good as Astrobot, probably, which is why it gets an 8.5 only, because um, it's it's not as good as Astrobot, 
and um, maybe there are some glitches actually. I guess I didn't really say why, I, I didn't really convey well why this was only an 8.5. So let's just say there are some glitches, and let's say some of the puzzles are annoying. Okay, 8.5, that makes sense. Anyway, hypothetically, very fun game. You're gonna, have a, you're gonna have a smile on your face the whole time, and you're, you're gonna fall in love with gaming again. Everybody in your family's gonna love this game, whether you're, you're five years old, whether you're 15 years old, whether you're 50 years old. You're going to love this game and have a good time. You can share the fun with the whole family. It's bright, it's colorful, okay? Fun platforming, uh, good bit of challenge, not too difficult. Although again, some, some of those puzzles are quite annoying and there is a few glitches that will hamper you. So only an 8.5. Um, everyone's gonna love it, except your racist Christian family members. 8.5, Plucky Squire. Anyway, that's it for my brutally honest review. If you enjoyed this review and it helped you make a purchasing decision, like and subscribe. If it didn't help you make a purchasing decision, like and subscribe anyway, because, you know, it doesn't hurt.